welcome, 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 one and all, to uh, the Pastor and Clay Show. <laughs> Every week, I'm going to have a, uh, a different different name, Wakulich and Clayla Show. We need to get your wife on here. And like, Ooh. what is it like to be married to you? She makes me look dumb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got better vision than her. Yeah, at least like, I have that. <laughs> and you're taller. Some than consolation. <laughs> I'm taller in my life, but I can see better than her. <laughs> taller and can see. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, yeah, she, is, she she tends to, uh, when we we did Catholic trivia when she was a student here at St. John, she dominated. Yeah, yeah she's she, wicked smart. She was really smart. I, I, she, learned, I learned that. Humbling. Humblingly yeah. smart to be yeah. around. Yeah, there's some brains in that matter up there. That's why I married her. I, <laughs> I knew <laughs> she'd humble me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to bring some brain power to this gene pool. Which of these girls around here is going to fit that cat? And she said, I need a boy who doesn't wear glasses. <laughs> Match made in heaven, you I know. might say. Pigment and, some, and no glasses. Yeah, I can get tan. Yeah. I'm holding out hope that Grayson can, but he's pretty pale. Well, yes. I mean, it yeah. is their family line. They, uh, well. Anyway, <laughs> welcome uh, to the I pastor. can't complain. He's, he's really cute. He is. Yeah. He is. Uh, and, and you're about to have another one in the next few days, That's dude. That's right. Lucas, Sophie, super pale, and the name will fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. I, I pulled my mic down. Go ahead. Try it again. See if you can drink that coffee while using I did it. I success. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the mic down and try to talk in it. Hey, well, uh, welcome to the Pastors of Pain show here Rookie in uh, Pain County, America. Yeah. Um, we normally say stuff like, this is the two pastors, the St. Francis Xavier and St. John Catholic Student Center. Um, well, that would be lying. That would be I lying. <laughs> um, and so now it's the pastor at St. John Catholic Student Center and a parishioner at St. Francis Xavier. Correct. Building up to the arrival of Father Lawrence Nwachuku. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I've stated it before on the podcast. I just can't be more excited for Father Lawrence to be here. Yeah, He's, uh, and you're excited too about having him back. Yes, I'm. I'm very excited about him being back in Stillwater. I think he's he's a great priest, and um, I think Stillwater will be in good hands. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, he's um, he's very intelligent, holy guy. Um, speaks multiple languages, mm -hmm. and was the vice rector. I think I said this once before of the like the largest seminary or second largest seminary in all of Nigeria, which is, I think Nigeria has like multiple thousands of seminarians, mm -hmm. guys staying to be priests. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, we're excited about him getting here and jumping on this podcast with us. Uh, okay. So we just finished, we just concluded. Mm -hmm. Was that like four weeks of- I think it was four weeks. Four tips episodes. on the mass. Yeah. So I just, I, as a layman- a lot lame, of uh, lame man or layman? Which L one? Layman. Oh, okay. Layman. Okay. I uh, just had a lot of questions about the mass. And just a regular old dude in the yeah, pews. Yeah, just see things, see some variants. Just wanted to ask those questions, I feel like. Maybe yeah. some other people have too. Yeah. I've had to, I've had to like give people the customs and courtesy talk around here mm -hmm. because they, they show up, you know, again, there's 38 to 45 different dioceses represented in this church. Yeah. I mean, even when you sit around with students, like right out there in the Hoftorium, we're recording this from St. John, right out in the Hoftorium, there is two kids from Oklahoma City. There's a kid from New York City. New Orleans. Uh, Houston, New Orleans, Tulsa, and- Who knows where for And me. who knows Gypsy, <laughs> Gypsy Giant over here, Clay Furley. I mean, there's, I mean, you, like there's six different, seven different dioceses just right off the bat there. Boom. Of where people are from. I guess if I'm part of, most of my sacraments have come from the Archdiocese of Military Services. So that's a fun diocese. That is. Yeah. That is. We have Father David Webb, who's um, who's up there in Alaska now. He's Whoa. Making, he drove it, by the way. He went, wow, that must have been beautiful to drive. Yeah, he did, uh, he like <laughs> drove up to the Dakotas and then to Banff and then up to. Um, that's uh, awesome. Anchorage, Elmendorf. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if he's yeah, having like second that. thoughts. 
Alaska. Oh, well. I guess it's summer, so not yet. <laughs> yeah. Long days. Yeah. Long days. Long days yeah. alone up there. Well, there's there's, there's uh, blackout curtains there. Yeah, that's got to right. have them. Yeah. Okay, so we we finished that. Any any follow up thoughts on the on the last show? On the mass, I think I think we were pretty thorough. I'm, okay. I'm sure there's other things, but just go and worship the Lord and yeah, and don't do weird stuff. Don't do weird stuff is a is a it's a good thing to say in mass. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I had to make a course correction over a, at a cup when the couple was getting married. I was like, okay, listen here. When you received communion on the tongue, you you licked my finger. <laughs> and I didn't want to say anything, but I just wanted to say before your wedding, like, like, don't, don't, please, just stop, stop. Just doing keep that. your tongue still. Please. Just keep your tongue. Let me put Jesus on your tongue, and then, um, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah, we yeah. had a Hindu guy who who came up to receive Holy Communion one day, and no one knew he was Hindu because he's yeah, he's from I mean, India. There's lots of and he Catholic did what Indians. everybody else did, and then a, you know. He, the next week he shows up and someone gives him Holy Communion again. Mm. And then I don't see him for a couple of weeks. And then when I see him, we're chatting and he makes it very clear he's Hindu. And then he comes up to receive Holy Communion. And I was like, uh, I, I, I said a little prayer over him and I sent him on the way. And he goes, um, and he pointed at the ciborium. Yeah. And like, you're like, no. And so then I was like, let's talk after mass. Mm hmm. And then I've had to tell him three times he can't receive Holy Communion. But each time he says, well, I've already received it before. I was like, by accident, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I finally told him, I was like, okay, you have to be baptized and believe Jesus is God. Can you like, do that? You want that? And he's like, mm. So. Then... You haven't seen him since? Or? Uh, no, I still see him. He okay. shows up, but he, he just doesn't. Doesn't receive. That's he good. doesn't receive. Yeah. I, just, I mean, you don't want to, you know, as St. Paul says, consume damnation uh, upon himself. Oh, but yeah. 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 Oh, oh, that's, uh, yeah. That was a, that's an interesting one. We mm -hmm. talked about, like, preparing to receive Holy Communion. Anyway, go back to that one. Anyway, okay, so what, you, you okay. got a list of questions over there. I, I do have some questions, because I've got, you know, I'm a confused Man. Middle-aged man. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with regards to, in the spiritual life. And, oh, yes. Um, and uh, I guess this could be like 30 minutes of spiritual direction from me to you. Oh, what? <laughs> and so just on air and to everyone. So here's my question. Yeah. People, people when they tell stories and... And they talk about, uh, you know, their prayer life. They're, yeah. They often say, and then I heard God say this to me. And my myself personally, I've never heard a verbal voice mm. of God speaking to me directly. I think I've obviously been, been called in certain directions by God. But I would never say that. God has, you mm -hmm. know, manifested a voice in my head. Mm -hmm. um, is that what people mean by when they say, I heard God's voice? Or do they mean something else? Well, okay, go, go back. How do, you, how do you know that was God manifesting himself to move you in a direction? That's what I'm saying. That's no, how, but you said you've obviously had it. What's, oh, okay. Like, what, like, what's your encounter? You know, a couple Sundays ago, there was that whole first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. It was Correct. like, it was like the end of April, mm -hmm. and it said, um, and no one wants to hang out with Saul of Tarsus because he's a murderer, right? right? And mm -hmm. they think he's a spy. <laughs> it says, Barn Barnabas gets up and says, "Hey, hey, listen here." He's met the Lord. He spoke with Jesus, or Jesus spoke with him on the way. Mm -hmm. I went, I think so, I think for me, I think it's based on what I know, and that's that's a, a couple of things. Is what I know is good, and and the faith that I've received sacramentally and uh, theologically through my sacraments of baptism and uh, and confirmation mm -hmm. and increase in the Holy Eucharist, and um, and so and based on that. In my prayer life, I I like to think that I have a steady and healthily and ever-growing 
and holiness relationship with with our Lord. Mm -hmm. And based on that, um, I learn ever more about God and his and his infinitude, I would say. Yeah. And um and ever more about the good and the good of my life. So I would I would say I know the good and therefore I'm called towards it. And you feel to be nudged or prompted. It's not necessarily a feeling because sometimes I feel things that I know are not good. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess like I guess thoughts come into play. Like sometimes uh -huh. I have thoughts, and I don't know where thoughts come from. Really, I'm not sure if anyone does. I guess that's that's another question. Like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. like some some of my thoughts, I guess potentially could come from God, and I'm, I think. But not, mm -hmm. I think some of them and some of the good ones could come from me, but some of the bad ones too, but also some of the bad ones could come from the devil. I guess I can just, but I don't know where they, I don't know the origin of all my thoughts at all times. And that'd be a weird way to live is deliberately discerning where all my thoughts come from at every moment and at every time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. And so I guess uh, I would say I live a life according to what I know is good and, and what I've reasoned to be good and what's been shown to me is, as good. Mm -hmm. like, like, for example, I, I dedicate and uh, religiously go to Mass uh, yeah. every Sunday. And, um, and I know that Jesus is in the Eucharist. And I haven't come to that by any uh, logical analysis, uh, but uh, but through faith, and I act accordingly. Yeah. Okay. And so I would say that would be uh, a response to God's call for me to be holy. But it's never been like, "Hey Clay, this is God. <laughs> you should <laughs> you should really receive and believe in the Eucharist." You know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but sometimes I hear that and I'm not downplaying that, but is that what is that what people mean when they say they hear God's voice? Or is it more in the lines of what I'm experiencing? Is that that movie like Val Kilmer? Um, when they put the radio transmitter, it's like it's real genius when they put the radio transmitter in the guy's mouth and they use his face as an antenna. Uh, it must have been Al Kilmer, is that 80s or yeah, 90s? Yeah, it was 80s, <laughs> okay. 80s, real genius. Yeah, a little wacky there. Yeah, I yeah. don't know that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was they were making an onboard space laser platform on a B-1 that then they diverted the laser to a giant thing of popcorn. Anyway, um, and here, hearing the voice of God, yeah. Yeah, here's my concern is that I think, here's what I'm scared of when people say that, mm -hmm. uh, is that they feel something and they try to attribute a feeling to God in order to just do what they feel like doing. Ah. Is that... Is that Voila. A, yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Behold. Um, <laughs> yeah. Echo. Well, uh, okay. Let's see if we can dissect this. I do believe, and I have experienced hearing the voice of God. And I'll give you a couple, couple situations. One, when I was in basic training, this is the date is that, mm -hmm. that a beginning to date this conversation. Uh, I heard, I was out polishing my boots, which the air force doesn't polish boots anymore. And there were two guys about 20 yards behind me underneath the awning of our dorms, our barracks. And they were talking on pay phones. 19, this is 1995. And I hear, I wasn't born yet. You were not. Way. You were not even thought of yet. You were <laughs> thought of by God, but not by your parents. Anyway, so I'm sitting there polishing my boots, and I hear these two guys, and one of them says, "Well, if this Air Force thing doesn't work out, you should be a priest." Mm. And I turned around, and I realized that those two guys were having totally different conversations and not talking to each other and talking on the phone. And I was like, "What?" So over the next. I mean, now I'm 48. I can still remember that conversation I, that God had with me at the age of 19. Then there were certain times throughout my life that I've, I heard that exact same voice. Mm. Uh, one, uh, one time I was in Steubenville and some people asked me, they were, well, I was failing Latin miserably. 
Well, I was doing really great because they hadn't had a test. Mm -hmm. So I was ace in the class. And then at week like two, there was this huge test. And I could not learn the, to decline nouns and conjugate verbs. I just like, I failed Latin twice mm -hmm. in my career. And I was at Eucharistic Adoration. So people invited me to Adoration that night, this big praise and worship night at Steubenville. And I was like, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And the Eucharist passed right in front of me and stopped about, I don't know, 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at Jesus and I heard this voice say, it was the same voice I heard, the same like octave, go home. Mm -hmm. And it was actually very quiet. And then when I was in seminary, I was like, I don't know what I want to do if I really want to be a priest. And um, I heard that same voice say to me, Carrie, what do you want? And I said, I want to be a priest. And I heard this voice say, that's what I want to. So I've heard the voice of God. Yeah. What it's also brought with it is immense peace. Mm. I'm not always joy to do that. <laughs> There's always been this characteristic of, of peace there. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I've heard the voice of God on multiple occasions now. That's like six times in 48 years I've been alive. Yeah that I've heard the voice of God. So it's not like now um, there's also, I think more of like the promptings of the Holy spirit in our life, mm -hmm. the promptings of the Holy spirit to move us in something or the gifts of the Holy spirit of knowledge, uh, wisdom, knowledge, uh, understanding, counsel, piety, fortitude, and fear of the Lord, that the Holy spirit is then inspiring us in some ways, either to speak a word of knowledge to somebody or to hear their words and to come to an understanding, to give them counsel. Mm -hmm. There there's, there's that. And I think the Holy spirit is, you know, um, you know, like even, uh, with, uh, what's the guy in the Ethiopian eunuch? Is that Andrew in the Ethiopian eunuch? Where, um, where he's inspired and along the way, and he runs over to the Ethiopian eunuch who's in the who's the treasurer for the Queen of Sheba, and she he says, "Do you know what you're reading?" And he says, "I have no one to interpret it for me." Mm. And the Holy Spirit has inspired him, has spoken to him, right, and urged him on, motivated him to go, and he then speaks this knowledge and understanding to this guy. And this counsel to the, and the guy says, then what's preventing me from being baptized? And then it says the spirit whisks him away. So th there is those, uh, those moments when indeed God does speak to us. And would you describe those moments? I, this word I think is, is used a lot, but like mystical experiences, is that what, is that how you would describe them? Or just, I don't know, how, how, is that what, would you say that? Ah, oh, yeah. mystical yeah. I think there, there can be like in the Eastern Catholic Church, they refer to everybody as a mystic because they're receiving um, God's very divine life, Trinitarian right. life in us. So, mm -hmm. so on that level, mystical, and on others, it's like the mystical experiences of contemplating God. Yeah, could hearing the voice of God be a mystical experience? I'd put that in that category. Yeah. And it's not unheard of. No, uh, it's not some like foreign thing that God like. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't want to speak to you because he doesn't love you. It's, you know, um, you know, what is that Elijah on the mountain? <laughs> and he hears the, yeah. the fire and the rocks and those things like that. Mm -hmm. And God speaks in a gentle whisper. So what if, what if you hear someone say, you know, someone attributing something that you know that they probably shouldn't do? Nope. <laughs> to 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 God. Oh, well, there was that time you and I. We, I won't state where it was. Do you remember this? Uh, maybe it was this past Describe semester, and you and I were together. And I won't say where we were or who mm -hmm. was around, but there was a couple there. And the couple, I said, "Oh, how'd you get here?" And they said, "He goes, the Holy Spirit brought me here." Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, you remember that? So yes. That, and I thought, this straight dude is a strange cat. Yeah. And the girl too, because they had no, like somehow they, they weren't married and they made it to this event where we were. And it was yeah. like years over. They just hung out there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So I, I think there's people that attribute these experiences of God to sometimes yeah. things in their own noggin. Yeah. Can these experiences, I would say not the down, I don't, don't downplay like, it. I would not downplay it yeah. and I would not, 
I would I would only doubt if I had a reason to doubt. Like if I knew the person and like knew they were uh let's say dramatic. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh and uh had a habit of doing these things. Like they change their mind all the time. They're always saying God is directing them in like oh, a yeah. billion different directions. So, like spiritual bipolar uh, or something. Yeah, yeah something <laughs> like that. It's like I don't think God's trying to confuse you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> fetus et ratio, faith and reason are right. the two wings that lift us to heaven, mm-hmm. John Paul II said. So we, yeah. Yeah, so I guess like how how can we discern God's voice in our lives? If if you're someone like me, like or it's like in everyday life, it's like I think it would be quite rare for someone to like always be able to like hear God's voice manifestly spoken to them. And uh, I guess like, how do I live discerning God's voice in my life? Well, what, what are some, what are some tips and tricks? Well, the familiarity, you know, Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. uh, when they're in the garden it, and, and they're hiding, it says they heard the sound of God moving about in the breezy time of the day. So one is, they, we be, they can be, you can become familiar with the movements of God mm-hmm. and notice and recognize the movements of God in your life, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, how they move about in your life. So one, um, two is creating silent time as well, because if we're always constantly bombarded by noises, you know, um, like who, who's discipling you and teaching you about the voice of God? Is it podcasts and intellectual information or is it silence where God speaks mm. like Elijah on the mountain? Yeah. So those those things are are super important. Uh, there's oh, there's also these as we do that. There's also these moments where we realize God is speaking to us now in nonverbal communication. Mm-hmm. This this uh, last summer when I was at I was uh, at that. Um, um, spiritual life conference retreat uh, with Dr. Bob Schutz. Mm-hmm. And the last couple of days, we're learning to like pray over each other and, and ask each other for healing and ask you, you know, just pray, do intercessory prayer. And there's this priest who's standing before me who I've known this whole summer and four weeks now. We've been playing soccer together, having fun. And he asked me to pray for him. Well, there's one guy praying over him that I'm praying over him. I'm verbally speaking. And I, and I, and I close my eyes and I put my hands on his head. And I, and I said to him, St. Philip Neri is really close to you. And I just kept praying over him and calling down blessings upon him. And when we finished, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a relic of St. Philip Neri. And he says, I've been carrying around this uh, relic in my pocket as long as I've been a priest. I was like, I looked at him and I was like, uh, oh. What? <laughs> like I just said St. Philip Neri and I had no idea that he had a devotion wow. to St. Philip Neri. So there's there's nonverbal communication like I know ne- it just showed up in the in, in like you say in the eyes of my mind. Mm-hmm. So to to be able to do, like do that and you know Lexio Divina when you yeah. start to read the scriptures and spend time with the scriptures and spend time with the word of God and the readings at mass then you start to recognize the Lord's voice and also the word of God just, mm-hmm. it gets planted in us so that then when we speak, we're not speaking with our own words. We're speaking with the voice of God, which is the the word of God, the scriptures. Yeah. Here's a question. So in decision making and discernment over big life decisions, do uh-huh. you think there's a danger of over spiritualizing them in the sense? Here's an example. Go on. It's like. I've seen guys that are engaged like, man, I think I really need to pray about being a priest. It's like, like you, you've already Bro. asked this, this girl, girl to marry Mary. you. <laughs> it's like, Knucklehead. It's like, I think I need to discern this. And it's like, okay. Um, what's and that, and what's maybe that fair Padre, enough. Padre uh, people pray, hope, don't worry. I don't know. I mean, it's like, it's very simple, but pray, hope, don't worry. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, what if like you ask someone to lunch? She's like, well, can I pray about it? It's like, (laughs) like, is is there, is there a danger of 
over spiritualizing the sermon. Yeah, yeah. Well, this priest buddy of mine in seminary said, mm. you know, when you grow in the virtues, it makes everything quick, easy, and fun. Mm. The life of vice, we talked about this when you were teaching RCIA. Yeah. Like, vice makes difficult decisions for us. Like, we're like, oh, yeah. should I do this evil thing? Like, you know, when I'm becoming a vicious person, it becomes more difficult and less fun to make decisions. But when we are virtuous, it's quick, easy, fun. Yeah. Actually, I would, I would think vice makes decisions quick and easy, but ordered towards the bad. Yeah. So it's like when you're really struggling with those things, it's like it, 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 like you're trying to do the good, but it's hard. Well, yeah, because yeah. one of the vices then mm -hmm. becomes a, a sedia or mm -hmm. sloth, yeah. which is like like slow moving in mud or the noonday devil right. that then you don't want to move. Right. And I would say like prudence, like prudence isn't just like, like uh, sitting down and thinking about things. It's a virtue. So it happens like it's an intellectual virtue. Exactly. It can happen very fast. You can discern if a car's coming down the road and there's a little girl in the street, you can, uh, in an act of prudence, discern her good and save her. And then in, in a, a nanosecond, yes, in a nanosecond, it enables you to use the virtue of courage in that moment because prudence is the charioteer of the other virtues. That's right. So yeah. you're saying that once you become a virtuous person who listens to the voice of God, right? Then it, it's an act. I would say it, it's you don't have. It would be impossible to live your life contemplating every decision you ever make. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or meditate on every decision you ever make. And God knows that because he designed us and ordered us toward the virtue of prudence, which can help us in mm -hmm. those things. Are you talking to really to someone on this podcast? Is there somebody me, out there? Me. I'm talking to <laughs> me. <laughs> There's like some chump down in Houston. Well, I did that just like... see my godson, Luke, walk by. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, so... I guess like, here's the next question. So life is full of good things. I don't think the spiritual life is just about choosing between good and bad. Just like discernment of vocation, you're oftentimes yeah. choosing between very good things, right? And so how do we, and we can't choose every good all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I, I go to work and it's good, you know, and... But uh, I think when I'm working, I'm missing out on mass somewhere at some time, yeah. which is the highest good. Like, how do I discern what good to choose? <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah. You know, my eyes got even bigger with these glasses on. <laughs> I was like, uh, that, that is, it's, I think it's living in the present moment. Yeah. Because I, like, I, I don't know the map. Um, I don't have a way searching for and maintaining peace. No, that's not the book. There's another book by, um, Oh my gosh, it's in my office on the other side of that wall. And I can't remember. Uh, it's a French guy, Jesuit from the 1800s. And he's like, he says very clearly, you don't have the map to the direction you're going. It's like you're in the darkness in a foreign land and you're proceeding in a direction and you have to follow the Lord Jesus. So staying in the life of grace, mm -hmm. And staying in that in that peace and joy and gentleness and kindness with the Lord then allows us to just like make the decision and do it. Yeah. And if we catch ourselves scrupulize scrupul scrupulosity over it, <laughs> scrup it's a tough one. Scrupling, scrupling about it, scrupling about it. Mm -hmm. Then then there's a defect in us that we have to uproot. Yeah, I I think I think that's true. I don't think God um, wants us to live our life fretting over every decision. I think a life in the church and the, the saintly life is a life well lived. Yeah. 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 I would, uh, may, we may need, maybe need to continue this conversation <laughs> of knowing maybe. what the voice of God sounds like, because then the opposite side is the voice of the enemy. Mm. And I think Ignatius of Loyola and uh, the spiritual exercises. Ooh. That sounds like this sounds like a second show right, right here. Let's for the do summer. it. Oh my gosh, coming up next. <laughs> okay, well y'all have a beautiful summer. Remember to pray for these college students and get involved in your parish life. Peace. <laughs>